Okay guys, so our first video review topic is simplifying square roots. Uh, the first thing I've listed for you are the first 20 perfect squares. Um, and these are numbers that you should be really familiar with by now um, and can recognize them as perfect squares quickly. So what you might want to do in your cumulative notebook is list these perfect squares. Um, pause the video, I'm not gonna read through them all for you, but take some time if you'd like to or if you need to to write them down so that we can use them well as we move along. Um, but again, what we really care about is simplifying our square roots. So I've given some examples. And let's just talk about the quickest process for simplifying these. There are other ways to do it, but at this point in Algebra 2 Trig, I expect you to be pretty quick about it. Um, so what you need to do is look at the number under the radical, or under, in this case, the square root. And for number one, that's 32. And so you take 32 and you go through your list of perfect squares and start trying to decide which number divides into it evenly. And if I start with 36, that obviously does not. 36 does not divide into 32 nicely. Neither does 25. When I move down to 16, 16 times 2 is 32. 16 divides into 32 nicely. So I take my square root of 32 and I break it up into that perfect square number that divides into it well, and then the remainder. So 16 times 2 is 32. And then you simplify what you can. The square root of 16 is 4. You can't simplify the square root of 2, so you leave that alone. And that's it. Many of you can do this piece in your head and just go from square root of 32 right to 4 root 2. That's fantastic if you can. By the end of the year, all of you should. But if you need to break this down now and write it down, that's absolutely fine. Okay, let's do a couple more. Uh, 200. Well, on our list above, the largest perfect square number that divides into 200 nicely is 100. So I'm going to break this up into the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. The square root of 100 is perfect. It's 10. And square root of 2, again, cannot be simplified. So the square root of 200 reduces to 10 square root of 2. Notice I don't have decimal answers. I want things left in radical form. Number 3, negative square root of 405. That negative is outside, so you can just leave it alone. Um, I don't know what number divides into 405 nicely. So I can go right to my calculator, or 405, and divide it by 49. And I get the fraction form. So remember, to make yourself get whole numbers or decimals, you have to put a decimal after one of them. So let's try that again. 405 decimal divided by 49. And I get 8.2. So it's not perfect. That doesn't go in nicely. Um, let's try 36. So. I'm really lazy with my Inspire and I hate typing stuff in all the time, so learn how to copy and paste. So I'm going to go up to that 405 divided by 49, highlight it, push enter, and that copy and pastes it. But don't hit enter too many times. And then you can change what you're dividing by. This time I want to try 36. And that doesn't work. And so you keep doing this until you find the perfect square number that divides into it evenly, maybe 25. Nope, should go bigger numbers, maybe 81. There we go, 81 times 5 is 405. So when you go back to your paper, 1 times 5. Leave your negative out front. The square root of 81 is 9, leave the square root of 5 alone. All right, so that was a nice example of sometimes just having to persevere in trial and error through that. Uh, one last problem is the square root of 125. Give that a try. Quickly pause the video, see what you get, and then come back and see if you got it. Okay, so you also need to be able to handle variables under the square root. And keep in mind my sign at the front of the room and something that I'll say all the time and that math is consistent. So if you have a perfect square number or variable under your square root, that'll come out nicely. x squared is a perfect square, 
because x times x gives you x squared, which means the square root of x squared is just plain x. It is x that I squared to get me x squared. What happens, it's really kind of neat, is any even numbered exponent is a perfect square. So x to the fourth, the square root is x squared because that's what I multiplied to get there. x to the sixth, the square root is x cubed because x cubed times x cubed got me there. And the quick trick to think about is if I'm square rooting x to the sixth, if I divide that six by two, I get its square root out x cubed because it's what two numbers you multiplied to get there. If you have an odd number, like the square root of n to the fifth, well, just like with our numbers, you take the largest perfect square that divides into it. So four, n to the fourth is the largest perfect square exponent. And then write your uh, leftovers down. The square root of n to the fourth, or four divided by two, is n squared. And then leave your leftover square root of n in the house, or under the radical. Sometimes you'll have more than one variable, just break them up. This is like having the square root of a to the fourth times the square root of b to the seventh. The square root of a to the fourth, that's perfect. That's a squared. Something squared times itself gives you that number to the fourth. The square root of b to the seventh, that's odd. So you want to break that down. And so the next number down, b to the sixth times the one left over b. The square root of b to the sixth, six divided by two is three, is b cubed. Bring your a squared down, leave your lone b under the radical. And then of course you can put them all together. So often in this course you'll be asked to simplify something like the square root of 12, x cubed, y to the fourth. Again, until you get really good at these, you can break them up into pieces. So here's the square root of 12 times the square root of x cubed times the square root of y to the fourth. The largest perfect square number that divides into 12 is four. So 12 is four times three with a perfect square number. It is six and two, but neither of those are perfect. The square root of x cubed is x squared times x. The square root of y to the fourth, that's perfect. That's just y squared. And then you clean it up. The uh, perfect stuff goes out front. Square root of four is two. Square root of x squared is x. Bring your y squared down. And then you make one radical, one square root, for your leftovers. Three wasn't perfect, that stays inside. X wasn't perfect, that stays inside. And there you go. So that's it for some quick notes on reviewing simplifying radicals. We'll do more in class tomorrow. Um, give some problems a try on Math Excel, and have a great night.